I'm going to show you how to pull your SKC code off your dash uh, computer, I guess you'd call it, on your Volkswagen so you can program <clears throat> a new key with a new immobilizer in it. Most of the pe people that are looking at this have just bought an old Volkswagen from mid-2000s and they're looking to get a second key because uh, obviously you don't want to lose that one and really be in a mess. But anyway, let's get to it. It used to be you had to use a uh, software called VAG Commander or VAG Taco, or apparently uh, or there may be some other programs out there to pull this SKC code off of the dashboard computer in your Volkswagen. Once you had that code, you can use your normal VCDS, your or slash Rostec software that a lot of us already have to program that new immobilizer, but Rostec itself could not get your PIN number. So this guy in 2020, you can see this is from TDI Club, where you know a lot of guys go for their Volkswagen information, not just the diesel guys, but this is mostly diesel uh, specific. Anyway, this guy created op an open source uh, program, I guess you would call it, that the rest of us can access and even modify if you have knowledge in that stuff. I don't, I'm ignorant to all that. I've struggled through this and I was successful and that's why I'm really sharing this to help people uh, maybe struggle their way through finding this SKC code to help with programming the <clears throat> programming their new key. Now this, this is really some awesome stuff and you'll see there's 33 pages of it where it's capable of doing a lot of other things. I'm just going through specifically getting that SKC code and that's all I needed, needed it on two cars actually. So what you're gonna do, uh, you can follow this link here, but this takes you to his page. The guy's name, actually, let's go back one. This is where you should go, this page here. And I think that's where that link takes you uh, from the TDI club. There's his name, Greg Menunos. And you can and should donate to him right here if that's successful for you. Especially if he answers you personally on the TDI club. So he describes a little bit of what it takes here, but that's not enough for a normal guy like me to be able to get this stuff figured out. There's still a lot that I had to figure out besides this. Probably one of the more difficult parts is using, uh, equipping your computer to allow your Rostec cable to communicate with his open source app software, if I'm using the right terminology. So just doing that is hard enough and it's not described well on the internet, but I found one source, this guy right here. So first we got to get our Rostec cable, the ability to work, and I'm going to show you that first, and then I'll show you how I was able to pull the SKC code once that was set up appropriately. If you have other cables, maybe you don't have to go through this. I don't know, but most of you guys do. So this guy, I don't know what his real name is. It doesn't matter. It's under the name I'm Nuts. I had to zoom in because you can't click on these things to open them up bigger. So you kind of have to zoom in to see everything. Now, I suggest you go here and read it for yourself so you can zoom in, zoom out. I'm gonna scroll through this though in case this page is not up for some reason uh, by the time you look and maybe uh, you're gonna still need this info. Basically, you go into dev uh, Device Manager and use a process to install a different driver on your computer for this Rostec cable so it can go to a COM port rather than whatever port it normally works from. Fortunately, even when you do this, it doesn't ruin your uh, established connection with Rostec software. Like you don't have to switch things back and forth each time you want to uh, use this cable for one thing or another. We're about done here. 
Now, one thing I had to do was the second start, uh, part of the process. It wasn't exactly uh, the way he describes it here. I'm going to see if I can get to that. So this would be the step two of the process. Apparently this ports com blah, blah, blah was supposed to come up under my device manager automatically. It didn't. It was up under a different item. But when I clicked on it, I found it was a uh, was Ross Tech. You know, as I clicked on this second thing under a different name, it did say it was uh, it was my Ross Tech, but it wasn't connected. I actually had to do step one twice before I could get this to work. So this doesn't seem to work perfectly for everybody, but hopefully this gets you up and running. Unfortunately. I'm too ignorant to be able to <laughs> coach somebody else through it on this stuff. So once Ross Tech is set up to work with this, what you'll do is you'll go here and download one of his releases. This is his. Uh, this must be what he uses to change things. So don't download that one. Uh, but this is would be his newest release that he thinks is appropriate for the rest of you to use uh, to get what you need. So I downloaded this zip file and then unzipped it to a file on my desktop. And when I unzipped it to a file on my desktop, we'll have to remember that name. And now we use the command prompt on the computer uh, to access his software and get this SKC code. So we'll be much longer, we'll have what we're needing if you're successful like I was. So you're going to want to open up the command prompt in your computer. You'll go to... I've used it recently, but you'll go here to apps. And you can search command prompt down here. Or you can just click on command prompt if you've had it opened recently. So. What you do here is you've got to find that file that you've downloaded wherever it is. Mine's on the desktop. So I put CD for change directory desktop. And then I type CD and then wherever that location is on my desktop. And so I'm just going to bring up my other one where I had a successful read on things here. I'm going to scroll to the top so you can see what I did. So you can see that I put CD desktop and then CD, where, the, where my file's at, that's the whole name. That two is nothing secret. That's actually in the file uh, name on my desktop. And then this next one, I don't put CD. I actually put in, uh, I, I guess you'd call that command line for what you want that software to do that's in this file. I got that from here. That's where I pulled that. Now this COM3, you have to know what uh, virtual port or whatever your Rostex plugged into. Mine does happen to be COM3, but you might have to change this to a 2 or whatever it is. So let's get back where we were. I thought mine was on 2, so unfortunately I typed in a 2. Then I got a bunch of, I didn't get anything back out. And so this comes, this line comes up again. So I found out mine was actually on three. I went ahead and put it in. And now I finally got my information that I was looking for. All the way here at the bottom, it just gives you this SKC code. I guess some earlier versions of this uh, 
uh, open source software created just you know you'd have to pull two numbers from this string of data that's in a computer language type format and convert it into something useful but this actually is your code here if you're using a newer version of of this uh, guys uh, open source software next now that you've got your code you can now use your VCDS to uh, I'm gonna I hate videoing off this cell phone I just can't video off this cell phone for what I did here uh, so I'm going to go back to a different video style format to show you how to finish this up. Alright, so to finish this up, you go to YouTube and then Ross Tech actually, it looks like, has put this video out on how to program the immobilizer off that key now that you have the SKF code. And then you don't need the SKF code for this, but I assume you're also going to want to uh, program your your transmitter to uh, lock and unlock the doors and this is how you do that this guy's video here thanks for watching sorry if i was more long-winded than necessary i was trying to get in as much info as i thought everybody might need hopefully this is successful for you unfortunately if, uh, if you run into some problems i'm probably not the guy to be able to help manage you through that because i had difficulty myself but I'm hoping this will be enough info for somebody like me, a normal guy, to be able to get this process figured out and get that code for themselves without having to go to a, an automotive locksmith or having to pay the dealer a bunch of money for that code, which they may not give you anyway. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you can make a better video, I, I suggest you do if you're more knowledgeable about this stuff and get it up here so we can all benefit. Thanks.